my name is Michelle Ho. I'm a postdoctoral research scientist at the Columbia Water Centre at the Columbia University and the Earth Institute. I would put myself in the water resources and hydrology and engineering fields. So there's a bit of a cross between all of those. The big project I've been working on for the last two and a half years is this project that has a big umbrella term called America's Water. The goal of it is to understand where and what water is used for in the United States, uh, where we could optimise its uses, and to do that we need to understand what the variability in water availability has been uh, throughout history. So that's my role in the project. Um, I've been working with the help of people at Lamont Doherty in the tree ring lab uh, to look at water variability over the past 550 years. Uh, so that gives us a bit of a background as to uh, how long uh, we had droughts for and what areas we had droughts and where we had water surpluses. And the idea behind that is we could potentially uh, shift our economic activities to make sure that we compensate for areas that don't have enough water or have too much water. I grew up in this city called Adelaide, which is in the state of South Australia, and that's probably the driest state in the driest continent, inhabited continent in the world. Uh, and I remember as a really young kid going to visit my family, extended family in Malaysia. And this was a country where they had open sewers on the side of the road. And I stayed there for about two months and, you know, didn't really think too much of the water situation. And then I came back to Adelaide and I refused to drink the tap water for about two to three weeks because it came out of the tap and it was sort of yellow and brown. And uh, I think the only way I could drink it was like mixing it with cordial. So to me, that was just incredible. You're going to this country that has pretty bad water systems at the time. Um, you know, open sewers are pretty obvious. And then coming back to this world that was supposedly a first world country, uh, supposedly well developed and having water that I felt like I couldn't drink. So I think that was probably my first introduction into the state of water in the world. And when I came to the US and started looking at uh, what the issues were with water resources and infrastructure across the country, it really blew my mind. Uh, things like aging pipelines, um, aging reservoirs and dams, they were really surprising because I always thought this is a country that's very rich and yet there are all these problems going on. So the thing is infrastructure does age and after about 50 or so years you expect it to start deteriorating unless you maintain it and I think a lot of that maintenance has been lacking and we've seen that in recent events like I think most people would know about uh, the lead poisoning in Flint, Michigan. Uh, people might have also heard about the spillways, both spillways failing uh, at Oroville Dam in California and that's the largest or the tallest dam in the United States and yet those issues which were known weren't addressed. This is really an opportunity to improve things because if you have failing infrastructure or aging infrastructure uh, that's the opportunity to go in and put in place something that works now and into the next 50, 100 years something that will last the next few generations. What we've seen across the globe is there are many developing countries who have recognised that water is at the base of every economic activity in the world. You need water to live, you need water to grow food, you need water to produce energy. Um, and if we don't have a plan for how we're going to use that water, then we really can't even start to adapt to any sort of climate change that we'll face in the future. So uh, the thing I think I'd want most people to know is climate change is important, but it's only one piece of the big puzzle in solving uh, water resources for the United States. Mm -hmm.